I got a call this morning saying that you wanted to meet. Well, Jimmy sent you against my wishes. <sighs> Good luck with your career, honey. Fucking okay, bitch. Excuse me, did you have something else to say? Yeah, I'd rather sling bang bang chicken and shrimp all day than work here, you classist monster. <laughs> we can start early tomorrow. Gene, it's my understanding that this is sort of a full circle moment for you, that you grew up maybe wanting to be a stand-up or at least idolizing Phyllis Diller. And I'm kind of curious, I mean, what is it about Phyllis that really stood out to you? Why were you so captivated by her? Well, she was just so outrageous at, at that time. Um, she and Lucy, I guess both were sort of um, breakout, you know, female comic characters. I wasn't as crazy about Lucy. For some reason, as a child, her style mm -hmm. bothered me. Um, but Phyllis, I thought, was just downright hilarious. And I even bought her book on household hints on, on like like she said one thing was if you have like a really nasty roasting pan that you've made something in and you just, this stuff is on there like iron it's going to take you three hours to clean she was just throw a cheap meatloaf in there and send it to the neighbors because they will always send the pan back clean <laughs> <laughs> really smart i would do that I no, she just I, she was so outrageous and silly and i dressed up as her at a costume party and I, I just, I, I've always liked to make people laugh, but um, I, I didn't want to seriously pursue it as a career. It was too scary. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Uh, it definitely seems that way. I think on those, along those lines, Hannah and Caitlin, you've both come up through comedy. So I'm curious, I mean, who are some of your earliest comedy heroes? Who's influenced your career? Earliest heroes were honestly LA alternative comics. <laughs> Um, you know, like uh, Dana Gould and um, Janine Garofalo and that scene. And then, you know, the Sklar brothers and um, Maria Bamford is a huge oh. influence of mine. I love her so much. I mean, like, it, it's truly a list of 100 trillion people. Like, mm -hmm. I think there's something to take, you know, from, from, from uh, every style, you know? Um, and so, I mean, I love like the straight up club comedy. I love like alternative clown. And so I just really <laughs> went in on well, whatever I, whatever I could. Steve Martin is a big, Bo Burnham is a, a huge um, influence. <laughs> um, the list goes on. Well, I grew up watching um, Lucille Ball and um, God, I mean, I had so many as well. I, I, uh, Watched Saturday Night Live. Gilda Radner mm -hmm. was a huge one for me. I just thought she was so amazing. And just like <laughs> anybody who just seemed like they actually were like giving it all from the inside and not caring what they looked like was so um, fascinating and inspiring because, you know, you, you have that juxtapose that with like other TV where, you know, there's like Dallas or whatever, and everyone's just pretty. And it's like, Oh God, like, I don't know. I just, the people who were just gritty and, and just gave it a hundred percent and were loud and ugly. I was, it was so freeing. And so mm -hmm. not that they were ugly, but you know what I mean? Like fine to make an <laughs> ugly face because it was funny. I, it was not something that you saw in real life or I didn't with women. So I was so inspired by that. Um, I loved designing women and loved <laughs> art. I was a huge fan. Um, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, uh, she was a big one for me as well. Um, wasn't really, I didn't know much about the stand-up community until I moved to LA and started like the Scholar Brothers are now my friends and Maria Bamford, like those mm. guys, I love them so much, but I know them more as friends. I, I didn't really see them perform as much, but I'm sure that they would be on my list too had I been a little more informed. <laughs> Now, designing women, that sounds familiar. I, <laughs> Gene, have you heard of that one? <laughs> I was curious. So you, you mentioned, Gene, kind of being terrified by the idea of doing stand-up. And yet, you know, here we are as, as Deborah in the series, very much performing stand-up here. But you had Hannah and other folks with stand-up comedy experience on set. What did you learn from them? Well, it was a little intimidating, but also too... Yeah audience it's great because the audience um that i'm doing it in front of i usually didn't have much of an audience if if any while we were shooting because mm. folks, but at one point at the, we shot at the world Trim theater and they had sporadic people that they filled in later but but those people were paid to have to laugh so nice. <laughs> nice. Audience you want you know you want your check you laugh oh that helps hannah have you ever tried paying an audience 
you know, um, <laughs> I haven't, but I'm going to start. It's, it's very clear that it's the only way to protect myself. It's from pain. <laughs> and I'm sick of the pain. Okay. I've been doing it. Speaking of stand-up, Hannah, I have just recently rewatched your great set when you were on Colbert last year. And funny enough, you had a joke in there comparing dating men to going to Vegas, which I just thought was a great coincidence. <laughs> but I feel like Vegas always gets ragged on. I've, I've been once and I found, some jo- I found some joy in it. It's kitschy, you know, but I wondered for each of you, what, what is there to like about Vegas? What are the charms of Vegas? <laughs> well and really good restaurants. Yes. And Cameron, I want that joy for you. (laughs) I, however, am an old maid in a sense. (laughs) And I simply, I cannot party with the young, the I can't, I, I, I I was just telling them, I, you know, the last time I, it's always like something always goes wrong. I also think like, and uh, not to be like, uh, not to be Ava right now, but (laughs) I also feel that Vegas is a place that is sort of like built for men. Okay. Mm. Like male desire and male pleasure. And I truly, when I go to Vegas, like people just grab me, like men, men are just savage. It's disgusting. There. It's like, it's like, yeah, we're come on boys. It's like the boys weekend capital of the world, but also there's <laughs> the bachelorette parties, which I get, whatever. I, I don't thrive in a club. Okay. I thrive in a, like, coffee shop but Vegas is great my grandmother lived there she was a lovely gorgeous lesbian who was a real estate agent in Vegas and and she loved it and I love it for her and I love it for you and I love it for whoever loves it well I do have to say the part I liked I like found old Vegas and I went to this restaurant that was like we have $12 steaks and I was like cool I'm there like that's the part of it I liked so like and I, I found I, love I 100% love it for you I have mm-hmm. to say, I went to Vegas a handful of times. I, I moved to LA in my early 20s and went to Vegas on like quick trips. There, mm. It's a whole different world when you have a little more money or someone's bringing you to Vegas for something because the hotel mm-hmm. rooms can be very nice and the <laughs> restaurants can be very nice and you can be driven places and not walk through a, a sea of barfing 20-year-old people. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like Rob and I recently went to Vegas to shoot an Imagine Dragons video. And because it was COVID, we had to take a private plane. And then we were just driven to our hotel. And then we worked. And then we got great food. And I was like, this is a whole different ballgame. Yeah. My best <laughs> 20-year-old Vegas. So it can be it can be nice. Jean, your thoughts on Vegas? Are you a fan? First time I went, um, my husband and I just sort of discovered Blackjack. It- <laughs> And we, it was like the days of wine and roses. It was horrible. <laughs> too long when they're now vacuuming around your feet. You know, it's like four or five in the morning, and there's almost and nobody in the room, and they're now vacuuming, and you're still. How much do you have left on your credit card? <laughs> Pull up that other credit card. We need. I need some more chips. You know, <laughs> smoking too much, and you're drinking too much. You're thinking. But the problem is, if you win, it feels so great. It's so much fun. Mm-hmm. You lose, you feel like the largest fool in the universe, and you just kind of went, Well, no, 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 I, I did, I was practicing kind of back. No, please, no, please, no, no, no. I, I want to just throw out my whole answer and say, If I could go to Vegas with Gene to smoke and drink and play Jack Blackjack, it would be a dream. And I would also like to invite Caitlin. I'll come, yeah, it's I would nice. love that. <laughs> that I would love. It's so a day, it. it's a day, yeah. <laughs> Um, I want to talk, I like that I, I have the three of you together because I think obviously this, this series is so funny, but there is this really strong emotional component. And I think that really comes out when we see the interpersonal relationships between Deborah and DJ, between DJ and Ava. And uh, I mean, that's really what, you know, six episodes in is really standing out to me. And I think that there's this undercurrent of like, well, this series is about how, whether we mean to or not, we're using other people for our own means. Um, I thought that was a kind of a powerful message. I wondered, I mean, I wondered, did that, does that stand out to you? Like, what is the, what is the hope beyond laughing, beyond enjoying the series? Jean, could you speak to like, maybe what you hope folks get out of this series? I guess like any story, you're just going to hope that they, they become interested in the characters. So that mm. no what the setting or what they're doing, you just want to watch. You want to see them do stuff and interact. What I was saying to somebody the other day is it's so sad that everything Deborah thought she was doing right as a mother, you know, taking her kid on the road with her because mm-hmm. 
abandon her or leave her at home. She wanted to be with her toddler was, of course, the thing that Caitlin says ruined her life. And as a parent, you know, that you you know that you always feel like you're either doing too much or too little. You're always never getting it just right. And and the fact that she's on the shrink's couch complaining, about, you know, mom dragging her out on the road when Deborah thought that she was doing it out of love. And that's sad. It's mm-hmm. fun. It's it's sad and and but and and, and and the way Caitlin is with with Hannah, um, oh my God, I mean, like she's treating her like they're besties, like they go <laughs> you know, in high school together or something is is adorable and kind of painful. That mm-hmm. Hannah really doesn't have a lot of friends, and, um, and of course, I blame myself for that, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I feel like DJ is Ava's ghost of Christmas future, kind of. Mm. Like this could be you if you don't become emotionally intelligent. <laughs> Curveball. I also wanted to mention, Gene, I'm loving you on Mayor of East Town right now. <laughs> and <laughs> brilliant show. Caitlin, I kind of assume you're an expert on Philadelphia and, and that <laughs> region. <laughs> and I don't know if you've seen the show, but I wondered if 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 you thought that Gene was doing a good job. <laughs> Listen, number one, of course, Jean is doing a good job. (laughs) Number two, I haven't seen it, but what I'm recently catching up on is, um, oh gosh, what am I, why am I blanking? You. So many great shows. Oh my God, you're in something. (laughs) Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to kick myself. I can't, you're, I'm, my husband and I were just watching something and we're like, oh, Jean's in this. Well, okay. Watchmen? (laughs) Here she is amazing again. No, it's, um, yes, Watchmen. Yes. Watchmen. Yes, we were like, nice work. Thank you for saving this entire interview. She's so good in everything. She's just she's like- so good in that? Isn't she gorgeous in that? Uh, in addition to being oh, great. Gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And my husband also was like, man, she looks good. I was like- Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah with the gun. I was like- yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> when you share a sense of humor with someone, you make each other better. When you get big, there's no sense of excitement, no risk that people are going to hate you. Oh, come on. Plenty of people can still hate you. That was good. Yeah.